Hey, this is Big Guy DIY coming to you with another simple repair. Hopefully it's simple, I don't know. Um, a friend of mine gave me this mower and he said, do whatever you want with it. It's been sitting around for five years, I think, outside or maybe in his garage, but it's never, it's never ran in the last five years. So <clears throat> I'm gonna take this apart and see if I can repair it without buying is uh, the the idea is to buy as little new parts as possible and just sell it get rid of it let me show you what I got here so as you can see this is a Toro it's not it's not old in the bag it's a bagger right there and it's in like excellent condition. So I don't think he ever really used the bagger. Attaches to the back here. One thing I noticed when I went to work on this, I picked it up. This is your serial number for this tractor. Because if you have the same tractor as this, so I'll show you what it is from the front again, the same model. That's your serial number. So one thing I'm going to do is, it originally was installed on the back here, using Gorilla double-sided tape. We're gonna stick this back on. Next, we're gonna take off the air cleaner. What's interesting about this is the throttle line is here. On the right, uh, on the left side, as we look on it, it'd be on the right side. Throttle comes down to here, but the carburetor is over here. So again, your throttle's over there, but your carburetor is over here. So I just looked over this, and it's kind of gooped up inside. Don't know what I'm gonna be getting into, but. We'll find out, sure enough. So let me set the camera up. We'll start taking this thing apart. All right, first thing you do is we're gonna restick this on here. Stuck the serial number back in this tape. There is no gas in here, so I don't smell anything varnish-like, and there is no shut-off valve either. I think it needs a new air filter. Color wise, looking in here, it has a uh, kind of a varnishy color. So we're going to pop this off. As I do this, I'm looking at the size of the screws to see if there's different lengths in them because sometimes these screws go in 
you're gonna have a different length depending on what it's uh, holding it. So this needs to be cleaned off. Here's my rubber gasket. I'm going to take this off now so I don't lose it. A little dirty, but not too bad. So what I'm trying to see is how the cable comes from the other side to here. This is where it hooks up. I got the spring here. The auto choke spring here. get you in close here actually let me get a flashlight one thing to remember is when you're taking uh, everything off on a carburetor you want to be able to uh, I don't say memorize but you want to remember where everything hooked up So you can see my two springs there. So we can point them out. So here's one spring and then the other spring. I think the only one I really need to disconnect, well, I don't know. I see where I have to disconnect the arm which controls the fuel flow. And that's that, oops. Sorry. See the little elbow there bending down. Right on the tip of my finger. That has to come off the carb in order for me to remove the carb. So I'll undo both, both springs. So one spot will be here. One spot will be here at the end. Backside here, I'm going to disconnect my fuel line. There's no gas in here, so I don't have to worry about that. Right here, it's attached to the top part of the carb. It goes up to the back here. You can see my other spring there. I'm trying not to lose that back there. So I have to find a small little wrench to undo this nut on the top.
what I might do is I'm going to take this top off. This will allow me to kind of get a down view onto the carburetor. Two Phillips screws in the top. There we go. Give you a little better look at everything here. So that's the nut I need to take off. And my assumption is this part here just slides right into the top part of the carb. So if I move that, I should be able to drop the carb down. I was right. So it's just a stud that comes straight through. Here's a piece that sits inside this notch. So now that our carburetor is separated, I'm gonna undo, undo this arm here, which is what controls the butterfly. That's your butterfly right in there. So that controls your butterfly. We're gonna unhook that. And there we go. So before I start taking this apart, I'm gonna take it outside and do a little carb cleaning. Now when I'm cleaning carburetors, I always use a cookie sheet, especially when I start to disassemble this. So all the parts, any parts that fall out, say a ball bearing or something like that, or even a small spring, it'll remain in the cookie sheet. Here's my original gasket that came off the face of the carb. Carb choke cleaner, nothing special. Gum out is the brand it sells. You can use anything, but this happens to be the brand that was at the store. And I like to buy the huge cans because I usually go through a lot of this stuff. When you do this, you want to wear eye protection. You should wear eye protection. Now this plug, I'll show you a close up, that holds this, so here's a hole there, there are also holes, there's one there, now there's three, I think three or four holes that run around this plug <clears throat> that's holding your fuel bowl up. This has to be cleaned out, oops, this has to be cleaned out. Because fuel does run, fuel does run through this.
varnish. All of that has to be cleaned out. That's what clogs the pickup in the carburetor. Here's the axle that holds the float. I'm going to pull that out and then carefully lift the float up. And you can see my needle here. Look at it carefully and see how it's attached. And then separate it. Now, a lot of times I'll look inside here, the carburetor, and see if there is um, a slot, which means you'd be able to remove the injector or the jetting from the center of the carb. But this one here, there are no flat sides. So all I'm gonna do is just take the carburetor cleaner and put it up the butt end of this. And then this end here. In the reverse. Your O ring. Alright, so I did what I can with the spray. I'm going to take a wire brush to this and I'm going to show it to you once I get it cleaned off. You can see this closely. The spray is not taking that off, so we're going to wire brush this leading edge where the um, O-ring sits on. Getting low on light, so I brought this inside so you can get a, a better look. But now you can see the edge where the O-ring sits on for the bowl. And when I say wire brush, I'm using a wire wheel. This is brass, not stainless steel. Stainless steel is not a good thing to use. On aluminum uh, you want to use brass it does less damage if any damage at all so I clean the face off here from the gasket that fits on this and I clean this face off little corrosion inside here you can see it right there So what I did is took this little wire brush here, put it inside that and try to get some of it. It's not easy. But that looks a hell of a lot cleaner than before. So I think it's all set to go back on, but I want to clean the uh, surface or the area where the carburetor sat. Just to get some of that junk out of there, I'll just take the carb cleaner and give it a spray. And then we'll reinstall this carburetor. 
So we gotta put this car back together. So I'm gonna clean off this gasket. Since I got this rag soaked pretty good, that's what we're gonna use to clean off the O-ring or gasket carefully. So all you do is the reverse when putting this back together. Take your needle, slide the head back onto the float, grab your axle, lead it through the uh, hub or whatever you want to call it there. So when you put it through, you want to make sure your length is even on both sides here. Remember those holes I was talking about? You can see the holes now. One on each side. Be careful not to cross thread the uh, this going in. Okay, going out. Reattaching the fuel line in the back. We've got a vent hose in the back. Interesting. I was hitting the handle that would make this run. And somehow I think all of this runs through vacuum. Like it's not a cable that opens up the butterfly.
yeah, need a new plug. So we're gonna put a hold on this and I gotta go out and get some parts. Back here the next day. Now this motor here does not have an oil drain. So there's two ways of removing oil from this motor. One is with an oil extractor, which I'm going to do. Get what little I can out. And then the other is <clears throat> this motor is also designed where you have to tilt the whole engine on its side to drain the oil. Uh, this is similar to another motor I worked on, uh, which was my dad's old lawnmower. It was the same deal, no drain plug on it. You had to tilt the whole engine on its side, which is kind of stupid in my opinion because there's no shutoff valve for the fuel. So what stops the fuel from leaking or choking the carb if you got this whole thing tilted? So the reason I'm draining oil, obviously, is to put new oil in, but I'm not gonna put it in right away because I wanna take the blade off. So it's easier to take the blade off um, when you got no fluids in here. So there's no gas in here. We'll get rid of the oil. Now this oil <clears throat> extractor I bought a couple of years ago. You could read what it says for the brand. What I like about this is after you pump up the pressure in here, you don't have to keep pumping. My old one, you'd have to keep pumping and this handle would slowly rise and it would lose pressure. This one here maintains its pressure. So once you can't pump the handle any further, just leave it and it'll continue to evacuate the uh, oil. This model came with uh, two different hose sizes right here for here, depending whether you're uh, extracting your oil from this type of dipstick or a really small dipstick on like say a boat or an automobile or even inside a differential. Now you can hear I've got all the oil. done extracting the oil you want to clamp the end of your hose high so the rest of the oil that's inside the hose can drain into the tank all I did was just attach it to my light here so oil will continue to work its way down right into the tank Here's my underside. So we're gonna take this blade off, clean that out. You can see the belt drive here. Runs up to the gearbox. That's what feeds the power to the front wheels to pull this. Yeah, a little cleaning to do here. I'm gonna remove the top of this because I know it's packed with dirt and crap. That's the cover to the uh, drive motor. So let's get set up to clean this off.
All right, I'm just gonna go take this to my grinder and it almost looks bent. I had to go take this to my grinder, clean it up a little, throw it on. So we'll be back. Alright. This was definitely bent. It was a uh, bowed. I threw it in my vice grip. My vice in my vice. I just bent it back. So it's not so much bowed. When it's bowed, it means it's it's cutting the grass low out here and the outside edges, but the center is higher. You don't want that. You want it to be level. So this is all set. I'm put that back. This is just uh, waterproof gearing, wheel bearing uh, grease. I'm throwing on here. So what I wanted to know is how to take the cover off. This cover here of covers the gearbox and the belt. And it appears you gotta do it from underneath. Two bolts. And that's it. Block of wood to hold this up. Underneath here is a bolt up there. See if we can get it to lighten up. There you go. That's a bolt there. And then there's another one. Trust me right up there and that'll allow this gearbox cover to come off what a dumbass design I guess cheap motors are designed to not be worked on sad thing is our society's become uh, a disposable society so we make stuff really cheap and affordable, but none of it can be fixed. It gets thrown away. So we just get piles of crap around us. all I wanted to get to that I'm not replacing the belt uh, belts cracked is it yeah it's starting to but I don't even know if this runs so I'm not gonna even bother with the belt just gonna clean this up get this grass out of here put the cover back on Put a spark plug back in, throw some gas in there and oil and see if it starts.
If you were wondering what the spark plug is, what kind, I stuck with the original. That's your part number right there. RJ19LM by Champion. It's a cheap plug. This is dielectric grease I'm throwing on here. Throw it on a spark plug tip. Sometimes on a dipstick, the markings will be labeled. So 20 ounces, 591. So this here is a quart, or 946 milliliters. So it's gonna take more than a half a quart. I think I pulled out of this mower four or five ounces and that's it. Well, there's no oil in here. Checking our level, and we're right there at the second mark for oil. All right, I'm not putting a cover on here for the uh, air filter or anything like that. I just want to leave it open because if I have to use car uh, starting fluid. I will, but at the moment I'm just gonna leave this open just to see if this this thing even runs. Well, we know it runs. Now I have to probably take it apart more and figure out why it's not consistently running. So we know fuel's getting into the carburetor, but it's that, it's that crossover section. It's that crossover section from here to here. That's the part I'm questioning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this back up on the bench, well, my makeshift bench, <clears throat> and take this apart and try to figure out how it works. I think when the engine's running, it stays running through vacuum because there's no direct cable in there. I don't know. I, I, this is the first time I've come across something like this. So. 
that's it so I guess uh, after I get this going I'll come back on the video and tell you what I did so I took this apart and I wasn't gonna show anyone this and I thought, well, you know what? How can you learn if I don't show you anything, right? So I took it apart just to see how exactly how this uh, motor works. And one thing I notice, if you look here, and I'll get a flashlight on here so we can get a better view. There's no gap between the coil and the flywheel. If I turn this, the next set of magnets, and very slight gap here, I do have a gap. So there's two magnets here. You have a set here, and then a set on this back side and it's pretty much touching. So I'm hoping that's the problem why it won't consistently run because this is not set correctly. So we're gonna set this up correctly. Helps if I have the right socket. So to adjust the coil, accordingly to the, you know what the word is, I'm drawing a blank, just the coil, we have to first loosen it, and I need to find the right socket, there we go, so, when I'm checking the spacing between the flywheel and the coil, I'm using something called a feeler gauge. Uh, let's see, here we go. What it is, a feeler gauge is, it's just thin metal. And in here is the measurements of each piece of metal. And that creates the distance, correct distance that you need between here. It's 0.025. 635 millimeters which yeah I ain't gonna go in if you don't have a feeler gauge you can also use a business card that's about the same thickness the neat thing about a business card is uh, it forms to the uh, flywheel So you stick your feeler gauge in between the flywheel and the coil and you push in on the coil. You just lightly tighten it and then do the other side. And you want it to be stiff coming, when you slide it in and out you want it to have a little tug to it. Now, as we turn the flywheel so the magnets are here, we're going to check it again. And we have that space there. Turn it 180 degrees. And we get the space there.
So now you can see the space. That's needed. So like I said, if you don't have the feeler gauge, you can use a business card to do it. When you do tighten the two bolts on top, this one here and this one here, make sure they're pretty snug because believe it or not, the vibration from the motor will actually uh, make this coil slide forward. That's why a lot of times I'll find these coils rubbing or against the flywheel is because they didn't make this tight enough and then it slides forward. So I'm going to put this all back together again. I bought a new gasket o-ring for the carb here and a new gasket for the screw that goes up through the bottom here because uh, I was getting some fuel leaking out of the bottom. So might as well do that. So let me get this back together and we'll try it outside and see if it runs. Well, I think the motor is NG. It's hard to pick up on camera. Well, you can kind of see in the lights back here, there's a ton of smoke. And when I checked the oil on this motor, there was virtually no oil in it. I think the person damaged the piston and the rings and in this thing. And that's why they stopped using it. <clears throat> So, so I think this mower 
we're going to recycle it, meaning we're going to send it to the junkyard. That's sometimes there's some things you just can't fix. It's not worth doing pistons and stuff on something like this. It's such a cheap motor to begin with. So this is supposed to be the easy start. So it is a ready start. So no priming, no choke, nothing. So there's nothing to adjust on this. You're supposed to pull it and it runs. Everything's cleaned out. New plug, new air filter. Yeah, I think the piston's no good. I think the previous owner ran out of oil and so it's just gonna run rough. So fortunately, fortunately, here in my town, we have a metal scrap yard where you can bring stuff in and have it recycled so it doesn't go into a dump. The metals are separated you know, in regards to aluminum and steel and so forth. So this video is one showing a motor that is not working and is going to the dump. So I didn't think I'd ever post a video like this, but I'm going to. What the hell? It happens. This is Big Guy DIY Robert signing off. Have a great evening. It's late. I'm tired as hell. And I want to go to sleep. Have a good one.